Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Dear delegates, thank you. Thank you so much. Welcome to Rome. Welcome uh, to the city was a capital in the past, but welcome in a capital for the future. We are here to give a very clear message. Rome is not only the capital of the past. Rome is the capital for the future. I'm absolutely convinced and I'm absolutely happy for your presence here. Thank you so much, Joseph. I consider your decision to stay here a great gift for Italy and Rome. Thank you so much, Ricardo, and obviously thank you, thank you so much to Nicola because without energy and the leadership of Nicola, this event was impossible. So thank you so much and uh, welcome uh, in uh, this very incredible and gorgeous city. I would like to address directly to you uh, universities, uh, students uh, coming from over 100 countries uh, of the world because I consider your presence a great opportunity for you, obviously, in this city, in, this, uh, in uh, these days, but also for us, for politicians, for institutions. You, you decide to experiment a very important simulation, a role-playing game, maybe. But thanks to your several months of long work in your respective countries, in uh, the university rooms and around the world, today you represent uh, not a parallel diplomacy, but a great potential, the diplomacy of the future, the politics of the future. We live in a world in a very constant uh, change, very rapid change which sometimes does not even uh, allow us to understand in which direction we are heading to. Such a change encompass our living, our lives, our habits, the society where we live, the future that we are preparing. In this changing world, your collective efforts is very important, is precious for us, because your effort is based on dialogue and on rules, on exchange and on the balance to be found in a time that seems to be unbalanced. In comparing uh, different instances, different arguments, different narratives, we can find a common ground and the project of a common future with shared values. It's not easy today. If you open a newspaper, the paper on, in iPad, if you look, if you watch the TV, if you verify on the mobile the situation around the world, you understand it's not easy, this great challenge. But it's absolutely important and crucial today in the time of populism, in the time in which somebody considers the politics not important, the policies not important. So I refer indeed to the future and the values that today are threatened and denied through the violence of terror. Today in Ankara and in Ivory Coast, yesterday in Paris or in Tunisia, in Tunisia, in Tunis, the attempt of international terrorism, Naish or Al Qaeda is not only to kill us, but to make us live in fear. The goal of terrorists is destroy our lives. But the second goal is force us to live in the terror, in the fear. This is terrible. This is terrible. And if you think, the decision of targets is exactly a decision to give a message. In targeting the places of our, of our everyday life, theaters, restaurants, museums, universities, as in Kenya, schools, as in Pakistan, 
They try to lock ourselves up, to create isolation between us. They want us to live without what makes, what makes us human beings, not single numbers, human beings. This is the goal of terrorists, destroy our lives, our society, our culture, our education, our shared values. For this reason, the day after the attack, uh, at, the Batac attacks at the Bataclan in Paris, the Italian government proposed a little thing, but for me very important. For every euro we spend for security, we should spend an euro for culture. For, for every euro we spend in police, a euro for education. For every euro in the cameras who control our lives, a euro for video maker, for theater, for museums, for the education for the next generation. This is the answer of Italian government, and I hope this is the answer for everyone around the world. Because we'll never give up on what makes our life great and worth living. The beauty of art, the beauty of culture, the beauty of education. Therefore, security must go end in end with the investment in our suburbs, our banlieue, with the protection of, the c of citizens and the creation, creation of new opportunities for individual growth, with the creation of opportunities and common spaces, common spaces dedicated to exchange. Our common project cannot be other than upholding to our being human against the threat of terror the barbarism which aims at making us barbarians too. Hence, the importance of making institutions, national and international, real living space as you are doing here today. It means creating again, reconnecting in the time of connection, reconnecting that sense of community which today terrorism is threatening. For this reason, your presence is particularly important. The real United Nations try to give answer. The United Nations has a crucial role, and you know, I think, of the efforts to promote sustainable development, for example. As the United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon stated, 2015 has been a seminal year, this expression used by Ban Ki-moon, for development. The United Nations organized two crucial events. I attended both as the Prime Minister. The Addis Ababa United Nations Conference on Financing for Development in the last July, and September's conference, traditional, which adopted the agenda 2030 at the United Nations in New York City. These events have changed our vision, our vision of development. We adopt the Sustainable Development Goals with the idea of promoting a new international deal. We put in common all of our resources, all of our experiences, and all of our cultures. Italy is back and is doing uh, its part in its process. In the last two years, we have increased the trend of our official development assistance. I am determined to continue to do so because we have to face with stronger tools the big challenges to human rights, security, and prosperity and the environment. But without you, all is impossible. Without the role of a young generation, without a presence of new generation of people who believed in a different world, the efforts of government, the efforts of the United Nations, are not able to change the situation. So, your role is absolutely crucial, particularly in this moment. Today, we should all focus on citizenship, or rather on a new concept of citizenship, as this morning Umberto wrote on an important Italian newspaper 
preparing your uh, meeting of today, which compares and measures itself with enormous transformations we are experiencing, with the risks and opportunities stemming from them. This is a time in which globalization is an incredible revolution. You think about future 25. If I think about 25 years ago, 1991, I remember a different world, Soviet Union. I think uh, impossible uh, thinking about uh, mobile. Yes, I remember the first mobile in Italy arrived in 1990, but Internet uh, was absolutely out of our brain. If I think about 25 years ago, I remember an Europe completely different with only 15 countries, but in a different world. History changed our lives. But if we consider the next 25 years, how many big could be the transformation and the revolution? If you think about the role of communication, today, mobile is not only present in my life, is also this instrument who changed the, the, the relation between human beings, who changed the possibility of approach and communication for a politician, but who transformed also the day, the, the, the life of every day. For example, the banks. This is the bank for me. This is the newspaper agency. This is the transformation. This is a little symbol. And if you think about the next 25 years, how many big could be the transformation in geography, in history? For this reason, I think, we must consider trust and connectivity a prerequisite for politics today, especially when we are facing the challenge of populism, movements and personal parties that propose themselves as anti-everything, anti-everyone. In Europe in particular, but not only Europe, if you think about the United States election in this period, I think the problem is not only about Europe. I very appreciate the consideration of former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton last night. In Europe in particular, this populism has been particularly successful. Consider yesterday results in Germany. For many citizens across the continent, a lack of interest in politics is now a badge of pride. Commitment in understanding problems and finding solutions has been replaced with an obsessive need to identify enemies and persecute them. Populism only occasionally touches upon real problems, and it always lacks credible solutions. Now, my friends, the only way to defeat and neutralize populism is to respond to the public's legitimate demands for greater transparency and new form of leadership, and with the participation of the people involving the citizens in the institutions. And for this reason, your role today, your meeting today, is a particular important occasion for you and for the people who look with the attention to your efforts. This is the very important thing we need today in Europe and around the world. To what once seemed exceptional is the it happens every day. This is why I want to express my gratitude for the work in Italy that our men and women, men and women do every day at sea welcoming these boats arriving from Africa saving human lives. I can lose some point on the polls because we decided this strategy. Maybe I can lose some points in the po survey, in the polls, but I prefer lose in the polls than lose the dignity of human being today. I prefer lose the polls then lost the dignity. To my fellow European leaders, my colleagues, I have given a copy of Rossi's movie, Fuoca Mare, a movie about everyday life in Lampedusa. 
It's time to say enough with the selfishness of these countries who think that raising a wall will give a lasting response to a challenge which instead will be with us for years to come. How long do you think a wall my lies in the internet age? How can you defend a border when terrorists are born and raised in our cities, in our ballets, in our suburbs? How long can we turn a blind eye on all these looking only at our next election instead of patiently continue working in the European construction? The same process that has granted us more than half a century of peace in the continent marked before by year persecution and conflict. For this reason, populism and Islopian to easy answer must be tackled by the efforts of reforms in Italy, in Europe, around the world. I hope these reforms could show results in my country. Uh, my country was presented in a very important newspaper, a girlfriend in coma. Some, some journalists have called Italy. I prefer Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> but for the Sleeping Beauty needs a kiss. This is not the program for your night today in Rome. This is a symbol. This is a symbol. A symbol Italy finally could wake up and come back to play a role in Europe and in the world. But, but, the real important thing for me is uh, call everyone and ask you to play a role in uh, your university, in your country, in your experience, in your future. Because yes, Roma is a great capital of the past, but Roma could be also right a page of the future. And I think with you, this could be a great opportunity for everyone. Welcome to Rome, welcome to Italy, enjoy this incredible event and thank you so much to choose Rome and to choosing Italy. Bye-bye.